Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Friends, delegates, and distinguished guests, please. I stand before you tonight honored by your support, proud of the extraordinary progress we have made together over the last four incredible years, and brimming with confidence in the bright future we will build for America over the next four years. We begin this evening. Our thoughts are with the wonderful people who have just come through the wrath of Hurricane Laura. We are working closely with state and local officials in Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, sparing no effort to save lives. While the hurricane was fierce, one of the strongest to make landfall in 150 years, the casualties and damage were far less than thought possible only 24 hours ago. And this is due to the great work of FEMA, law enforcement, and the individual states. I will be going this weekend. And congratulations. Thank you for that great job out there. We really appreciate it. We are one national family, and we will always protect, love, and care for each other. Here tonight are the people who have made my journey possible and filled my life with so much joy for her incredible service to our nation and its children. I want to thank our magnificent First Lady. I also want to thank my amazing daughter, Ivanka, for that introduction, and to all of my children. Ivanka, please stand up. Thank you. And to all of my children and grandchildren, I love you more than words can express. I know my brother, Robert, is looking down on us right now from heaven. He was a great brother and was very proud of the job we are all doing. Thank you. We love you, Robert. Let us also take a moment to show our profound appreciation for a man who has always fought by our side and stood up for our values, a man of deep faith and steadfast conviction, our Vice President Mike Pence. And Mike is joined by his beloved wife, a teacher, and military mom, Karen Pence. Thank you, Karen. My fellow Americans, tonight with a heart full of gratitude and boundless optimism, I profoundly accept this nomination for President of the United States. The Republican Party, the party of Abraham Lincoln, goes forward united, determined, and ready to welcome millions of Democrats, independents, and anyone who believes in the greatness of America and the righteous heart of the American people. In 
In a new term as president, we will again build the greatest economy in history, quickly returning to full employment, soaring incomes, and record prosperity. We will defend America against all threats and protect America against all dangers. We will lead America into new frontiers of ambition and discovery, and we will reach for new heights of national achievement. We will rekindle new faith in our values, new pride in our history, and a new spirit of unity that can only be realized through love for our great country. Because we understand that America is not a land cloaked in darkness, America is the torch that enlightens the entire world. Gathered here at our beautiful and majestic White House, known all over the world as the People's House, we cannot help but marvel at the miracle that is our great American story. This has been the home of larger-than-life figures like Teddy Roosevelt and Andrew Jackson, who rallied Americans to bold visions of a bigger and brighter future. Within these walls lived tenacious generals like President Grant and Eisenhower, who led our soldiers in the cause of freedom. From these grounds, Thomas Jefferson, sent Lewis and Clark on a daring expedition to cross a wild and uncharted continent in the depths of a bloody civil war. President Abraham Lincoln looked out these very windows upon a half-completed Washington Monument and asked God in his providence to save our nation. Two weeks after Pearl Harbor, Franklin Delano Roosevelt welcomed Winston Churchill. And just inside, they set our people on a course to victory in the Second World War. In recent months, our nation and the entire planet has been struck by a new and powerful, invisible enemy. Like those brave Americans before us, we are meeting this challenge. We are delivering life-saving therapies and will produce a vaccine before the end of the year or maybe even sooner. We will defeat the virus, end the pandemic, and emerge stronger than ever before. What united generations past was an unshakable confidence in America's destiny and an unbreakable faith in the American people. They knew that our country is blessed by God and has a special purpose in this world. It is that conviction that inspired the formation of our union, our westward expansion, the abolition of slavery, the passage of civil rights, the space program, and the overthrow of fascism, tyranny, and communism. This towering American spirit has prevailed over every challenge and lifted us to the summit of human endeavor. And yet, despite all of our greatness as a nation, everything we have achieved is now in danger. This is the most important election in the history of our country. Thank you. At no time before 
have voters faced a clearer choice between two parties, two visions, two philosophies, or two agendas. This election will decide whether we save the American dream or whether we allow a socialist agenda to demolish our cherished destiny. It will decide whether we rapidly create millions of high-paying jobs or whether we crush our industries and send millions of these jobs overseas, as has foolishly been done for many decades. Your vote will decide whether we protect law-abiding Americans or whether we give free reign to violent anarchists and agitators and criminals who threaten our citizens. And this election will decide whether we will defend the American way of life or whether we will allow a radical movement to completely dismantle and destroy it. That won't happen. At the Democrat National Convention, Joe Biden and his party repeatedly assailed America as a land of racial, economic, and social injustice. So tonight, I ask you a simple question. How can the Democrat Party ask to lead our country when it spends so much time tearing down our country? In the left's backward view, they do not see America as the most free, just, and exceptional nation on Earth. Instead, they see a wicked nation that must be punished for its sins. Our opponents say that redemption for you can only come from giving power to them. This is a tired anthem spoken by every repressive movement throughout history. But in this country, we don't look to career politicians for salvation. In America, we don't turn to government to restore our souls. We put our faith in Almighty God. Joe Biden is not a savior of America's soul. He is the destroyer of America's jobs. And if given the chance, he will be the destroyer of American greatness. For 47 years, Joe Biden took the donations of blue collar workers, gave them hugs and even kisses. and told them he felt their pain. And then he flew back to Washington and voted to ship our jobs to China and many other distant lands. Joe Biden spent his entire career outsourcing their dreams and the dreams of American workers, offshoring their jobs, opening their borders, and sending their sons and daughters to fight in endless foreign wars, wars that never ended. Four years ago, I ran for president because I could not watch this betrayal of our country any longer. I could not sit by as career politicians let other countries take advantage of us on trade, borders, foreign policy, and national defense. Our NATO partners, as an example, were very far behind in their defense payments. But at my strong urging, they agreed to pay $130 billion more a year the first time in over 20